Welcome to Unit 3. This is writing about music. This is very, very important because you will be doing a paper. You'll actually be doing two papers. One is going to be an early instrument paper. The other will be a concert report, and we will talk about both of these things. Now, both of these papers uh, have specifics that are in the modules. So uh, the specifics for these papers, there's a rubric that's um, put into the modules as well. So you have all of the guidelines you need, but I just wanted to talk about writing about music for just a little bit. Okay, so this is unit three, writing about music. And these are things that you might want to include in your concert report. So you are going to go to a professional orchestral concert possibly at Disney Hall or at the Seegerstrom uh, Auditorium down in Orange County, but you're going to go to a professional orchestral concert. Yes, it has to be professional. Yes, it has to be an orchestral concert. This is not any other sort of concert other than something with a giant orchestra on stage, or it could be an LA opera performance or a ballet performance or something like that. And you kind of want to get this concert out of the way as soon as possible be because you want to uh, <laughs> make sure that you don't miss it. This is a very short class. It's only a few weeks long. So get your, do your, your concert as soon as possible. Find something that you're interested in going to. Make sure that it falls before the deadline. You have two deadlines for your concert report. One is for the rough draft, one is for the final draft. So now you're writing your concert report and you're thinking, what in the heck do I put in this concert report? Well. If you want to get a lot of pages, it's actually quite easy to fill a lot of pages. Um, first of all, research the composer. Uh, there are going to probably be several pieces on this concert and several composers on this concert. So you want to research the composer. You can do this by looking in most, most uh, performances have programs. Most programs have details about the composers. Som sometimes concerts, especially like the opera, or a ballet, they might have a pre-concert talk which tells you all about uh, the composers and the pieces and all of the interesting things. Research the music. Um, look, again, read that program. Uh, look up the pieces that you're going to hear. Um, you want to include interesting facts about the piece. Think about why it was composed. Interesting circumstances about it being composed. For example, you know, was Beethoven almost completely deaf when he wrote that particular orchestra piece? Um, that's, that's kind of a neat little tidbit to put in, and yet the piece was spectacular. All right, then you want to write about the performance and the audience reception to the piece. Compare and contrast the pieces that were per performed. So, you know, think about the different movements of a piece. Many times pieces will have more than one movement, so you don't clap between the movements, but you do, um, you know, you'll have like first, second, third, and fourth movement, and that will make up one piece. And so... You know, you can contrast the movements or you can contrast completely different pieces. And that will probably be fairly easy to do because most performances pick pieces that contrast. I want you to listen when you're listening to these pieces with the eight musical elements in mind. So that's melody, dynamics, rhythm, harmony, texture, timbre, form, and word music relationships. Write about several of these using terms that we have learned. So in each chapter, there's going to be terms that stand out and you can put your cursor to hover over those terms that are emboldened and it will come up with a great definition. Um, so if you need the definitions, you can do that, but definitely um, review the things that we've studied in the musical elements uh, unit of the book and use some of those vocabulary words that you've already learned. And then finally, cite your sources. If you do not cite your sources, you are basically saying that you are a genius and you made up all of the things that you were talking about. But you want to cite your sources so that it's not considered plagiarism. So definitely cite your sources. All right, so there's also something at PCC called the Music Lab or the Music Library. It's not where the regular library is, that giant, giant building, but it's in the CA building and it's actually all the way in the basement. So the basement of the CA building, which is the Fine Arts Building on campus, um, and I'm talking about the Colorado campus. Um, but 
in the basement there's uh, resources that you can use. They actually have books there that will, like the Groves Dictionary uh, of Music and a set of encyclopedias which are like, you know, but you can also actually find all of these resources online. These are um, available to you online and these are the online library guides for scholarly articles and sources for class assignments. And I have a link here where you can look these up. So if you need um, sources that will help you with your papers for music, specifically for music, you can find it online, or you can go to the CA building old school style and, you know, look at some books. Um, and uh, they have a really, really great selection there of things that you can, can look up and find. So there you go. Concert report checklist. Plagiarism. Oh no. After you write your paper, I want you to go through it and check for the following. Did you get the information from somewhere else, like the internet or a program or your book? A book? Any book? If so, make sure that you've cited your sources. If you do not let me know where you received the information from, it is considered plagiarism and it will be an automatic zero for this assignment and a note in your PCC file. The other thing is when you are quoting um, any of these sources, um, I'm talking about using a sentence or something like that, not giant swaths of paragraphs that someone else wrote. So I want it to be mostly your writing, your impressions, your information that you've put together and uh, written in paper form. Also, did you collaborate with a friend over what to write? This is also considered plagiarism and will be subje subsequent subject, excuse me, to the consequences on the previous slide. So basically, do not plagiarize. Also, do not use AI. This is a new thing um, that is available to the world at large. If you get caught using AI, you will flunk this class. So do not do it. Um, Besides, AI is so generic in general, and I prefer what's in your brain. So don't don't use a stupid robot brain. They're not actually that intelligent. You are much more intelligent than that. Concert report checklist. Look at your grammar. Did you use the word audiences? This is most likely wrong. You refer to the audience in the singular. Even though it's many people, it's a single unit. So you would say the audience was very quiet. You would not say the audiences were very quiet. That would basically mean that there was one, more than one audience. There is not. You may say the audience members if you would like to use a plural form of it. The only time audiences is really used is when you're referring to multiple concerts or multiple showings of one concert. Audiences all over the world fell in love with Dr. Mitchell's series of lectures. That would be appropriate and so true. Okay. References and research. Did you have trouble with a historical era portion of the assignment? The historical time period of a piece is derived from the dates that that composer lived. Did you use the word opera? Be careful about this application. Opera always has singers, but not all music with singers is opera. An opera must be a drama sung from the beginning to the end with orchestral accompaniment. If you want to go to an opera, do a Los Angeles opera concert. Those are spectacular. Strengthen your language. Never use contractions like wouldn't, I'd, wasn't, that would be for an academic paper unless it has been specified that the assignment should be written in an informal voice or style. Eliminate I believe or I think. You don't need them and this just weakens your statements. Avoid weak or ambiguous words, things like kind of or something. Those don't tell me anything. Find a substitute word. Find a stronger word or a more interesting word. Um, www.thesaurus.com is one of my favorite websites and it makes my writing more interesting. So if you are using the word, this was a great concert, I really enjoyed it, it was great, and the audience was great, and the pieces were great, and everything was great. Well, that's like six different times that you could come up with a different word for the word great and make that whole thing just so much more interesting. Okay, proofreading. The biggest anti-mistake? 
is to not proofread. So read your paper out loud. You will not believe how many mistakes this helps catch. Even better, have someone like your mom or your dad or your roommate or a friend who's not in this class read your paper back to you and tell you if it makes sense. Um, yeah, even if you read your paper to a pet, that's it's really helpful because you're like, oh, hey, I didn't mean to say that. Proofread, proofread, proofread. Okay, next section is about concert going etiquette. Having good manners at concerts is very important. Good manners at concerts. Proper concert etiquette shows respect and common courtesy for the performers and your fellow concert goers. Remember to always use your best judgment, but here are a few common rules of etiquette. Dress nicely. I rarely regret if I've overdressed for an occasion. If I am underdressed, I frequently wish that I'd made a greater effort. This is true for a job interview as well. Always overdress. Concert going etiquette, good manners at concerts, the next page. If you must leave for an emergency or you have arrived late, enter or exit only when an usher indicates that it is okay to do so. If there are no ushers, only enter during applause in between sections. This should be self-explanatory, but do not talk during a performance. It's just considered rude. Cell phones and other noise-making devices must be off. Never text or call someone during a concert. Have you ever been in a movie theater and there's that one person in front of you who has their screen on super annoyingly bright and they're like texting or doing something stupid during the movie that has is, you know, I don't know if they're bored or whatever, but they're, they're using their phone and it's blinding and you can't see what's going on. It just completely destroys the atmosphere and the mood. Do not text. Do not use your phone. Make sure your phone is off and don't talk during a performance. Okay. If you would like to video or take pictures, ask the performers or the concert organizer ahead of time. Generally, it is not allowed to take a video or taking pictures uh, during the concert. Um, and it can actually be illegal, so just, just do not do that unless you have special permission. Also, never use a device that makes a noise or has a flash. If your performance venue allows you to eat in the auditorium, do not unwrap candy or slurp soda while the musicians are playing. Otherwise, no food or drink should ever be bought, brought to a concert. The one exception would be if you have a cough. Cough drops are to be unwrapped before the concert or during a pause and then ready uh, ready them to abate the coughing silently. So um, you can just pop them in as you need them if, you, if necessary. Okay. To clap or not to clap? That is the question. Some classical pieces of music are broken down into parts called movements. In between these movements, the music will stop for a few minutes. Usually the audience does not applaud until the conductor or the performers have dropped their hands and turned around or risen to acknowledge the audience. The best rule of thumb is don't be the one that starts the applause. You want someone else to start the applause and then you wait for a few more people to know if you should do it. But if the composer, if the conductor has his hands up, you know, like he's, he's conducting or he still has his hands up between, or he hasn't turned around to face the audience. Generally when the piece is over, they will turn around to face the audience. So wait for that and always let somebody else start the applause. That's the best part. Okay. Helpful hints. Take a pad of paper and jot down a few notes in between pieces to help jog your memory when you have to write your paper later. However, don't write during the performance. It will distract others and it might even possibly distract the performers. Plan ahead. Keep an eye out for an event that really interests you. Writing about something that you find interesting is much easier than something that looks completely boring. And for those of you who aren't really used to classical music, well, you know what? I think you're going to be surprised. Um, there's always things to look at and, and watch and listen to. And a live concert is so much more interesting than it ever was on, on a screen of any sort. Helpful hints. Next page. Be open to trying something new, but also consider researching the program to make sure that it's something that you won't actively dislike. 
Find other performances of the program online or at the library. Uh, go to YouTube or Spotify so that you know ahead of time what you'll be hearing and, and seeing ahead of time. After you attend the concert, if you need to hear the pieces again to help you write your paper, um, try finding them online or at the music lab where there are thousands of CDs. Those are like circular, circular discs. Eh, you can probably download it too. Finding concerts in Los Angeles. The greater Los Angeles area hosts a plethora of concert going op opportunities. Many of these are free or they offer discounted student rush opportunities. If you go to the Los Angeles Philharmonic, you have student rush tickets. I believe the opera does too. My favorite way uh, to search for concerts is via this website, www.performingartslive.com. While you're there, you can click on the find an event tab and narrow your search by region, by musical genre, so that you can search for only classical and even know you can you can even search by if an event is free or not. Here are also some links to some high quality groups in the Los Angeles area to help get you started. You can check out the music department websites of local colleges and universities. Um, although not, I'm not talking about um, community colleges. I'm talking about actual universities. So. Um, make sure that the event is a classical music, as some venues, such as the Colburn School, also have non-classical events. They have jazz and different sorts of things. Um, so look at the LA Philharmonic, the Los Angeles Opera, Pasadena Symphony Orchestra, Jacaranda's Chamber Music, the Pasadena Pro Musica, Colburn School, uh, USC School of Music, and the Thornton Concerts. There's all kinds of great events, but uh, click on some of these links and or copy some of the links and put them in your browser. The first paper that you're going to actually turn in before the concert report is an early instrument report. For this assignment, you will choose a medieval, renaissance, or baroque instrument. Please research this instrument on your own and create a brief introduction to it in paper format. Possible instruments include the serpent, a psaltery, a curtail, a dulcimer, a harpsichord, a bagpipe, Regal, a hurdy-gurdy, the crumb horn, viola da gamba, and more. Additional instruments may be found in the module for Unit 3. There's a whole bunch of pictures from a very early instrument encyclopedia from the 1600s. It's pretty cool. In your presentation for your early instrument report, include the name of the early instrument, the family of instruments that it belongs to. Include a picture of the instrument and, if possible, a sound or video example that features the instrument being played. Pull together two to five pages about the instrument. I mean two to five pages of copy, not two giant pictures on two pages. No, I actually want at least two pages of copy. Do not copy an existing source. Rather, create a new and interesting introduction for the information that you have found. At the end of your paper, list all of the sources that you have used. In your early instrument report, this is a fantastic opportunity to utilize those online library guides for scholarly articles and, and sources for this class. Um, sources for the class assignment can be found at the library guides link that is on your screen right now. There are two lists of early musical instruments. The first list I found in Praetorius, the second list I found in Mersenne. Both of these men were musical historians who, that documented detailed descriptions of every instrument known to man in their music encyclopedias. These books are available online in their original languages and they contain a wealth of information including drawings of the instruments, measurements, ranges of the instruments, and more. The authors each scientifically log every instrument that has been used or was being used throughout the early 1600s. So they were both written in the 1600s and so that's kind of where they end. So you know these are true early instruments. If you pick an instrument like a cornet or a recorder or a trumpet or anything for your early instrument report that also has a modern um, 
version of it do not report on this modern version. Make sure that you're using references to the early music instruments made before 1600, such as an early cornet and an early horn had no vowels, and they were very, very different than what's used today. So don't report on the modern version, report on the version before 1600. One of the sources that you'll be looking at to choose your early instrument is one that I give you uh, from Michael Praetorius. He wrote a music encyclopedia in 1614. Um, that's even before the United States was born, so it was a long time ago. And um, the instruments that you see next were documented and drawn by Michael Praetorius in his music encyclopedia written between 1614 and 1620. It's in Latin, it's also in German. Um, so yeah, if you, you can run it through Google Translate if you can actually read the words that are there. It is in a early German font that was common in printing. So enjoy that, it's kind of fun. Here is a list of early instruments that Michael Praetorius talked about in his encyclopedia. Um, so you have something called a sackbutt. Well, that's a funny name. It's actually a very early version of the trombone, very similar to that. There are serpents, there's cornets, there's bombards, shams, sordons, rackets, kind of like what they sound, uh, crumb horns, bagpipes, orfarian, pandoras, lutes, liras, viola de gambas, regals, all sorts of interesting sorts of things. Even a spinet and a monochord and a clavichord, crazy. Okay, and then there's also Marin Mersenne, who wrote his music encyclopedia in 1636. So the early instruments as recorded and illustrated by Marin Mersenne in this encyclopedia are also included uh, on the next slide. This is from Harmony Universelle, the Books of Instruments. This was a music encyclopedia containing everything known about each of these instruments at that time of publication. It's written in French, so if you speak French, great. If not, Google, Google Translate is your friend. These are early instruments recorded by Mersenne in 1636. He talks about uh, the monochord, the lute, the double-necked lute, the cittern, spinet, harpsichord, clavichord, viol, uh, the lyre, the hurdy-gurdy. Hurdy-gurdy is pretty awesome. Pan pipes, flageolet, trumpets and horns, but not modern trumpets or horns. Do not do modern trumpets or horns. Remember, we already talked about that a couple slides back. The sack butt, the cornet, the serpent, the cornemuse, the musette, the sword de the, uh, the oboe, um, but not the one that we are talking about or that we talked about earlier, just a few slides ago. So look at the early versions of these. Okay, here we have several slides of early instruments. So the one on the left is an organ. The one on the right is a harpsichord. On the left, you see the workings of an organ. They actually pumped these big foot pump things, or actually they had young boys uh, lifting and lowering these, these pumps as the organ would play. Uh, on the right, we have brass instruments. Those are sackbutts and cornets. Uh, those those serpenty things, those turny things on the left. Sackbutts are on the right of different sizes. Then you have a trumpet down below, a horn, some more cornets. Here we have a serpent. Yay, the serpent! It was the predecessor to the tuba. That's why I'm so excited. Then next to that we have some bassoons and some different sorts of things. Look them up. They are awesome. Make these slides bigger. Read what it says about them. Okay, then we have some more bassoons, some uh, different things, flageolets, rackets, all sorts of great things. Here on the right, we've got lutes. On the left, we've got cornemus, uh, cornetti, um, all sorts of fun things. All right. These are viola de gambas. If you notice, they're different than cellos by because they have more strings. Um, but you, de gamba means leg. De gamba, sorry, means leg. There's also the viol bastarda, which is an an interesting combination between two different instruments. Um, 
yeah and then on the right you have some ancient instruments and uh, just different boat instruments strange things